Next Thursday. <laughs> How about you? I have another divorce in at ten. I hope they haven't reconciled. <laughs> if we don't get some new clients in here soon, I'm gonna have to start giving up some things I really enjoy, like Italian shoes and eating. <laughs> Cheer up, Dennis. I'll buy you lunch. Thanks, Roz. But you have to promise to give me first shot at any available men. I always do. Twelve sound okay? Six each should be enough. You know, I like it a lot better when guys like you are still in the closet. <laughs> What'd you come out for anyway? I mean, that's where you had all your clothes. You're slime, Marty. At least I'm straight slime. <laughs> you know, the kind who likes women? Let me tell you something. I like women a lot more than you do. I treat them with respect and affection. I don't want to hear about your hang-ups, Dennis. <laughs> Bay Area Legal Group, may I help you? Yes, I think one of our lawyers could take on a new client at this time. Uh, we have four lawyers sharing office space here. Is there anyone in particular you'd like to see? Uh, Marty Lang here. I'll be handling your case. Why don't you come in around two? And uh, don't forget your checkbook. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> Helen, I will need to wake up call about 1.45 and so <laughs> that Clarence Darrow cheat us out of this time. Pasquale Duran, undocumented alien, caught shoplifting a package of lunch meat. Oh, no. You can't dump a stiff like that on me. Sorry, Marty. Unless you can get someone else to take it, you are stuck with it. Well, no one else will take it. They all know what it is now. Morning, everyone. Uh, Sarah. I don't care what the rest of you say. I like Sarah. <laughs> this case. I believe in her. She's a good kid. And I think she deserves this opportunity. Well, I won't sweeten it for you, kitten. It was a tough battle, but I finally convinced them. No, sure, I had to stick my neck out. I'll take the case, Marty. Cancel that wake-up call, Helen. Best of luck. Get back here, Marty. You're not gonna dump this one on her. No, Roz, it's okay. I'll take this case. You can't do that. It's not nice to make Marty happy. You look tired, sir. How late did you stay up working last night? I didn't get much work done. David called. David? As in, David, I gave him the best years of my life, Collier? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Now, this is big news. Are you gonna see him? Oh, come on, Ross. You know what it was like with David and me. We, we never had the same priorities. He always resented the other things that were going on in my life. Uh, Sarah, come on! This is Roz you're talking to. How many times have you come over my house after a date saying, uh, uh, I'll never find a man who compares to David. <laughs> you shouldn't believe anything I say past midnight. I don't. Your dates are usually over by 11. <laughs> All right, maybe I have been carrying a tiny, a tiny torch. Okay. It's more like a bonfire. But I have it under control. I mean, the best thing for me to do is to forget that he even called. It's time for me to move forward, not backward. David. I really want you to have dinner with me tonight, Sarah. Oh, no, David, oh, I can't. Oh, look, it, it would mean a lot to me. No, I really, I can't, David. I... 
Maybe just suit. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh. Dom Perignon, 1979, the year we met. Oh, David, uh, that's sweet. Yeah. Dom Perignon, 1982, the year we broke up. <laughs> so you haven't become an alcoholic or anything since we split up, have you? No. No, I was kind of hoping you had. I mean, it was just a fantasy I had that our breakup drove you to drink. If it makes you feel any better... It has not been easy for me. I mean, I felt empty for a long time. Me too. There you go. I have a toast. Yeah? Here is to never feeling empty again. Oh, I'll drink to yeah. that. So, David, I haven't asked you how your writing is going. Well, <clears throat> uh, pretty well. Will you marry me, Sarah? You just kind of gloss over the small talk, don't you? Look, I have been thinking this over for a long time. You know why I came back? To complicate my life? I came back because I need you. Leaving you was the worst mistake of my entire life. David, maybe you don't remember, but we had a lot of problems living together. What, you're talking about that toothpaste thing again? Because that's over. No, look. I'll squeeze it from the bottom of the tube, and if that doesn't work, we'll get tooth powder. It's... David, I'm talking about the big things. Like what? Like the way you always wanted to make decisions for me. I don't make decisions for you. I mean, you know, offered advice occasionally. You enrolled me in law school without asking me. What could I do? I couldn't get you into medical school. David, look. I've spent the last two years building a life as an independent person, not as part of a couple. I mean, I love to get up in the morning and know that it's up to me alone to make things happen. That's exciting. It's challenging. It's fulfilling. It's... Lonely. Well, that too. We don't have to be lonely anymore. Well, now that's not fair. What's not fair? Kissing my neck when I'm trying to be reasonable and mature. Sorry? Well, I said it's not fair. I didn't say to stop. I love you. I love you. Come on, let's get married. No, David, no. What, you're not going to do this. You can't just waltz back into my life and expect to pick up where we left off. All right. All right, if that's the way you feel. I'm not going to force myself into your life. No. I'll make it easy on you. I'm going to walk out the door and I will walk out of your life unless you tell me not to. All right, no, oh, here, I'm picking up my coat. I'm heading for the door. I'm getting close to the door. I'm very, very near the door now. Oh, no, here, my hand is on the doorknob. Huh? I'm opening the door. That door is now open. Okay, I'm walking out the door. I'm out the door. I'm closing the door behind me. <laughs> I'm walking down the hallway. David, get back in here. See how easy that was? <laughs> what are you typing, Helen? My homework. If anyone had told me that law school was going to be this hard, I would have said no to the divorce and just told Harry to move on in the guest room with his girlfriend. <laughs> Helen, why isn't my brief for the Jastro case typed up yet? Because you haven't written it yet. Oh, please, can't you take a little initiative? Do I have to do everything around here myself? You know something, Marty? Now that I think about it, I can't recall having ever seen you actually work the eagle works at night, Dennis. <laughs> so does bacteria. You know, my mom, Sarah? Oh, thanks, Roz, but David's been waiting on the car for me now for... Oh, no, it's almost an hour. I have to go. Where's that Crucian file? I know I left it out here. It's the fifth night in a row you're going out. 
You guys must be throwing a lot of logs on the bonfire. Yeah, it's been great. I really think it might work out this time. It's just that every time we start to get romantic... I... Don't stop now. Well, every time we start to get romantic, we're interrupted. We can't seem to get a minute to ourselves. Well, you better tell him, if he doesn't keep his eye on the station, the train will pull out. No, Ross, it's not him, it's me. Well, you better keep your eye on the station or the train will pull out. If I'm parked in that space much longer, they're going to start charging me the monthly rate. David, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. Mm -hmm. I, I just have to find some papers and I'll be right there. Please, do hurry. My credit cards are expiring. I found it! I found it. All right, go home and make that man happy. And if you don't, I will. <laughs> I can't believe we're finally alone. Sure there's nobody under the table? No, David. <laughs> it's just you and me ah. and the candlelight. And whoever happens to be at the door. <clears throat> no, no, come on. No, no, please, no, please. Don't worry, I'll get rid of whoever it is, okay? I... Don't worry. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Now, listen, I packed Jesse's blanket and 700 of his favorite toys. <laughs> you got the keys to my apartment? If you have any trouble, just go down and help yourself. Uh-oh. Does, uh, uh-oh mean you forgot to promise to babysit tonight? Uh-huh. Uh-oh. I can stay alone now, Sarah. I'm already four, you know. <laughs> That's okay. I, uh, I don't have to go to my brother's wedding. <laughs> he should be able to find a new best man. Come on in, Jesse. Hey, look, Sarah, I'm really sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm the one that forgot. Look, you go ahead and have a great time. Jesse's welcome here anytime. Okay, now, listen, Jess, you got everything, right? You got your blanket, got your books, got your toys. I got everything. I got my tux, I got my keys, I got the ring. The ring. Oh, my God, the ring. <laughs> the ring. Bye-bye, baby. Mwah. You be a good boy. Make sure Sarah doesn't stay up too late. Just kidding. Hi. Bye. Bye. You don't mind, do you, David? No, no, no. <laughs> no, in fact, if someone had asked me what this romantic evening was lacking to make it perfect, I would have said a four-year-old boy. <laughs> and a turtle. Daddy's back! <laughs> oh. Kinky, Sarah, but I like what it's telling me about you. <laughs> Marty, who told you where I live? What are you talking about? I've been here at least a dozen times. Yeah, and I still want to know who told you where I live. What's he doing here? I, I believe you've met David Collier, Marty Lang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, great food. I am starving. I haven't eaten all night. Lucky break for us. There's a turtle on the table. Help yourself. <laughs> Marty, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah. I want you to look at this brief for me, doll. It's right up your alley, child support. Child support? Since mm -hmm. when do you take on such low-paying cases? Well, just this once. Only because I'm tired of loaning my sister money to feed those kids. <laughs> Marty, forget it. I'm not helping you out this time. All right. That's the way you feel about it. I can respect that. You a lawyer? No, I'm a sports writer. Close enough. Now, here's the thing. It's got to be on my desk 9 o'clock Monday morning. That's vital. Well, I have got to be going. I'm sorry. Oh, Sarah, could you be a lamb and pack a little of that into a doggy bag? My date is probably getting hungry by now. You left your date in the car while you sat up here eating? Well, it's not like I didn't leave the radio on. Take this, oh, go, great. and have a picnic, Thank huh? You. But right. please do go. You don't have to draw me a picture. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, 9 o'clock Monday morning. Okay, pal? Yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm overreacting, but I didn't like him. Excuse me, but what are we supposed to eat this with, our hands? I'm not overreacting. I'm tired. Oh, come on, sweetie, you can sleep in my bed. 
I'm asleep in here as you are. Oh, okay. Well, we'll put you right here then. What, what phone? I hear no phone. Don't worry. I'm not going to answer. I have to answer, David. Hello? Yes, this is Sarah McKenna. I see. I see. Oh, that is bad. Well, don't worry. I'll be right there, Pasquale. I'll be right there, Pasquale. We're not the words I was hoping to hear. David, please try to understand. They just put him in jail because he doesn't have any papers. Listen, he's really scared. I'm all he's got. I, I just have to go and talk to him. Well, why can't I wait till tomorrow? He's in jail. He's not going anywhere. No, we can't wait till tomorrow. He needs me now. What about what I need? Why does what I need always seem to come last around here? David, it doesn't always come last. Sarah, look, I asked you to marry me about a week ago. Now, you have done just about everything but give me an answer. David, can we talk about this later? I am 36 years old. I would like to get married. I would like to have a family. I'd like to have a little guy like Jesse with your nose and my jump shot. It's important to me. Well, it's important to me, too. Although I'd prefer if he had your nose and my jump shot. I'm serious. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. Look, we'll talk about it when I get back, okay? I love you. Now I remember. The only time she says, I love you, is when she's running out the door. That's not true. Love you, David. <laughs> Hey, Stuart. Shh, shh, shh. I could be wrong, but I have a real feeling that Lassie's about to come home. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Sarah, you have tissue? Yeah, sure. I just love that dog. <laughs> hey, how was your brother's wedding? Well, uh, of his four weddings, I still like his third one best. <laughs> better food, better music, better bride. Where's David? David's gone, Sarah. He asked me to tell you. I mean, uh, he wanted me to say that, uh, how much do you like this guy? It's all right. You don't have to tell me. David's not coming back. Well, he was pretty upset when he left. Uh, what happened tonight? Well, I was two hours late for dinner, and then I told him I didn't want to marry him, and then I went to see a client in jail. Is that so bad? Sounds like a fun evening to me. <laughs> What is it with you men? You come back whenever you feel like it and you think that everything's going to be okay. And then when it's not exactly the way you want it to be, you walk out on us. Well, you know, I have a life too. I wish you'd realize that. Now get out! I start wearing a helmet when I come over here. Stuart, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Oh, Roz, what are you doing here so late? Well, I knew you were supposed to be having a romantic evening with David. I saw all the lights on. I figured something must be wrong. Hi, Roz. You're not David. I know I'm not. Sometimes I'm not even sure I'm Stuart. <laughs> David's gone. He left about... When did he leave, Stuart? Two hours ago. How come he knows when David left and you don't? This is not a good sign. <laughs> Nothing went right, Roz. Right in the middle of our romantic dinner, a client called. Right, and he's in jail. And, and you I... dropped everything and went down to see him because he needed you. Right, but I was gone, gone longer than you thought because your client was really upset. And when you got back, David was gone. Right. We're very close. <laughs> oh, this, this is very depressing. I can't believe I let myself fall in love with him all over again. And I knew it was a mistake, too, but I let it happen anyway. Why do I keep doing this to myself? It's the same reason I always take a size six into the dressing room. I know it's not gonna fit, but I can't stop trying. <laughs> Ross, have I made the biggest mistake of my life? Sarah, I've known you for a long time. And when you really want something, you hold on to it for all you're worth. No, not yet, sweetheart. Come here. I'm going to get you home, put you to bed. Why does everyone look so sad? Oh, we're not sad, honey. We're just... Depressed. <laughs> yeah, right. I had a bad evening. David and I had a fight. You want a hug, Sarah? Well, yes, I would love one. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel better already. Yeah. Thank you. You know, Jesse, I'm not feeling so hot myself. 
I need to package some of this stuff and take it home with me. I should charge five bucks a hug. I never have to work again. Hey, Roz, I didn't ask you how your evening went. It was a disaster. I sat at the studio group for two and a half hours. I talked to a lot of different guys with a lot of different lines. I found out something very upsetting about myself. What? I have standards. <laughs> I remember when I was married, I used to dream of the single life. And now you dream of the married life? No. Now I dream of the afterlife. <laughs> hey, well, here's to life in the fast lane. Yeah. Cute. Oh, can't stand watch the fight. No, not gonna stand watch the fight. We'll just listen to the air conditioning ducks. Good night. Bye, guys. Oh, David. Why do you keep coming back into my life? Because I don't know what to do about us. I want to marry you, but I'm afraid I'll be miserable if I do. Or miserable if I don't. Say something. We can't get married, David. Oh, see, now I'm miserable. Oh, look, don't you see? You want me to be something I just can't be. Well, I thought maybe it could be different this time. Well, it can't. All the things that were wrong before are still wrong now. But all the things that were right before are still right. David... We're just not right for each other. So I guess this is it, huh? Yeah. Hey, we're doing the right thing, you know? I know, yeah. I know. Well, I'm heading for the door. <laughs> My hand is on the doorknob. I'm opening the door. I'm walking out the door. Next on St. Elsewhere, the emergency room tackles a violent patient. Can Elliot keep his head in a tight situation this weekend?